everyone, this is Val. I'm an interviewer for The Unfair Advantage. Today, we are here with Victoria from UC Berkeley. And today, she will tell us about her great journey throughout high school and how she got into UC Berkeley in the first place. So, Victoria, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Victoria. I am currently a third year at UC Berkeley studying economics, and um, I am from San Francisco. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so basically, we're just going to ask you, uh, how was your high school journey? Uh, what made you choose UC Berkeley? That kind of question. So if you would like to start. Yeah, um, so starting off with my high school journey, I went to a really small high school in San Francisco, um, where the our, my class is only about 190 to 100 people. Um, but I remember um, starting from my freshman year, I had from, from my freshman year to my senior year, I had, I had a really great experience. Um, so starting off with my freshman year, I entered in the school not really knowing um, anybody there because nobody from my middle school went there. Um, but I still wanted to um, grow and be a part of the community. Um, so when I first entered high school, I, um, I, w I knew I wanted to join um, some teams, some clubs, just to meet more people. Um, but I was, I was hesitant, and I'll have to say that I think that hesitance was a really big obstacle in um, meeting new people, but I guess over about like a month or so, I've got more comfortable with the school, and I was less scared um, to um, meet new people and uh, brave enough to join new teams. So my freshman year, I joined um, volleyball, I joined basketball, and I also joined softball teams. And for clubs, I joined the student council, which um, was definitely a great experience of mine. And I carried the, um, I stayed in those teams and clubs throughout my entire high school experience. Um, and they, from each um, club and sport, I've learned so many lessons and so many skills that um, that I can carry outside of high school alone. So that was um, that was beneficial on like the academia professional side. But I also gained a lot of friendships and long lasting um, healthy relationships and um, that I can or with people that I can talk to and rely on. I'm so sorry about okay. that. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, a question for you. Um, how many colleges did you apply to during your senior year? Like, how many did you pick? How many did you apply to? I applied to six UCs, um, three CSUs, and um, just one private school. Uh, Actually, and, private. and in the end, what made you choose to go to UC Berkeley? Um, well, I can think of like two things off the top, two or three things off the top of my head. Um, one is that UC Berkeley is a great, um, prestigious school if you're looking for, um, strengths in academia and they have, uh, ac or, sorry, UC Berkeley has a lot of departments in which they are leading in on the national level. So that was something that really, um, intrigued me about the school. Also that, um, it's proximity to home. Um, I, I wanted to go to a school close to home at the time. So UC Berkeley for me is just about like a 20 minute on a good day, maybe like an hour on a bad day um, away from home. So that was another determining factor. And um, I also chose Berkeley mainly because of the, it's a big school. Like I wanted to go to a big school because I came from a really little school and I wanted to experience getting knowing, getting to know like a lot of people and at UC Berkeley there are a lot of people for sure. Um, so that was another deciding factor. And did you go into college knowing you wanted to major in economics or was that something you just discovered as you were applying to the college? Um, funny thing is I did not declare economics or had I had an idea that I wanted to do economics until the 
until the end of my sophomore year. And typically um, students by their by the end of their sophomore year, they have already declared um, and they are set to go for the rest of their college career. But I went into um, Berkeley wanting to do the pre-med route. So I applied as a molecular cell biology um, major. Um, but after my first semester, I soon realized that Science, physical science and biological science wasn't my forte. So um, I changed to public health, changed my major to public health, which was something similar along the lines of like pre-med and health, um, just not as science heavy. Um, but I, in that coursework, in public health coursework, um, you have to uh, students have to take an econ class and i had never taken an econ class in call throughout my college but prior to that just one semester in high school but after taking this one econ class it totally changed my mind on the major i wanted to do and completely shifted my path so i kind of had like a late entry into um, my current major um, but now i really love it and i do not regret the decision oh that's wonderful uh tell me when you were applying to college, what did you think was the strongest part of your application? Because many students always want that wow factor for all colleges. So tell me, what was your wow factor that you really felt stood out to colleges? Um, I think for me, pers um, it was my essays for sure. Um, I'll have to admit my SAT scores and ACT scores weren't that great, um, but I felt like my essays were really strong. And I think the strongest aspect about my essays um, followed this pattern. It was, um, I encountered an obstacle. This is how I overcame this obstacle. And this is how I plan on um, continuing my progress, like in college, after college. And I think that's, um, that's one of the, one of the ways I recommend writing college essays is to really show how you as a person have grown through obstacles in your life. Um, and it can be something super minor. It can be like learning how to skateboard or learning how to surf, or it could be something really major that happened in your life. Um, it's up to your, your creativity, your willingness to write whatever you think is your best story on your college essays. And I think that, especially now with COVID times, SAT scores don't matter and ACT scores don't matter as much. So at, definitely I would recommend strong essays. And also in high school, do not be afraid to join clubs and organizations. Um, that definitely strengthens your application as well to show that um, you are engaged in um, in activities outside of schoolwork. And I understand that um, a lot of people don't have the privilege of being able to join like sports teams or clubs um, in high school because they have outside responsibilities. But make sure to also mention mention those um, responsibilities. Um, outside of you know clubs, sports, schoolwork, um, because those are also important aspects of your life and your journey and colleges to look for um, your strength and character. Perfect. Uh, tell me, as a college student, uh, I know that time management is a very important aspect in the college life. So how have you been managing your style like during the quarantine and even before the quarantine? Like how did you manage your lifestyle? Um, I'll say before quarantine, my schedule was much better. Um, before quarantine, I actually had like, you know, one of those really healthy, <laughs> healthy um, schedules. Like I would wake up at 630. I would go to the gym in the morning because it's only like a couple blocks from my apartment. And then I would go to classes and then I would um, do work in between classes, get home, um, make dinner. Um, and then do more work and then go to sleep by 11 o'clock at night. Um, so that I guess my best recommendation for time management for the in-person setting is to kind of like write out your day. And I definitely recommend everyone to have a Google calendar no matter what. Um, just writing out your day, planning out your day ahead of time, planning out your week. Um, if you have any future assignments coming up, 
Um, you can write it down or put it like in Google Calendar or Notion. Those are two really good platforms to use. Um, for me personally, it might not work for everyone. It creates structure in my schedule, in my life, and it's easier to follow rather than um, just going with the flow. But I know some people um, really like uh, work better under going with the flow. So um, honestly, whatever works best. But now amid COVID times, my sleep schedule is like 3 a.m. sleep and maybe like 8, 9 a.m. wake up. Um, not the greatest, um, but I definitely do find time man time management to be more difficult um, during virtual learning rather than um, being in person. Um, but I try my best to continue to write to-do lists, just to sort out my calendars. And just to make sure um, I'm informed and I just, I totally have double check syndrome. So I always double check when my assignment due dates are, when my exam dates are. Um, so yeah, honestly, the greatest tip, is, the best tip I can give is try to find um, the method that works best for you to time manage and don't be afraid to test out. And once you've found it, make sure to stick to it and um, try to improve upon it if you can. That's so great to hear. Um, so from what I know, the transition from high school to college is a very, it's fairly difficult because it's a very new experience in college compared to high school. And can you tell us about how you made that transition from like this high school lifestyle to this more free range, flexible college lifestyle? Yeah. Um, so I feel like for me, it was um, a pretty big transition because, again, I came from a really small high school and going to UC Berkeley, which has like 30, 40,000 students, was definitely a big change. Um, but I think something, an advantage I had was that I was going to school really close to home. Um, so it wasn't much like I didn't have to like move a lot of things. Um, if I forgot something at home, I like some, I could just drive there to go pick it up or have someone drop it off. Um, so that was definitely an advantage I had of going um, to school, going to school close to home. Um, but I will admit the I will admit the transition was really difficult because in high school, like you have your schedule, you have first period, second period, third period lunch and then so on and you have it all back to back and basically you have no free range in your time so like you're given a structure in your schedule from your school um whereas in college it's different you kind of you have more flexibility with your schedule which can be a good thing and bad thing at the same time good good thing in the sense that you can decide what classes you want to take um what times you want to take them and um, you can sort out your own schedule however um, works best for you. Like if you're a morning person, you can um, do more of your classes in the morning so that you're more productive during those times. Or if you're a night owl, you can do the opposite. Um, so that's definitely a, an advantage of flexibility. Um, but a disadvantage of time flexibility is that if um, – is discipline is self discipline um, becomes a really difficult thing because in high school um, teachers basically are, are teachers and administration are like controlling your schedule whereas um, so that you basically don't have opportunities to uh, not be in school or like not attend a class um, whereas in college you have to hold yourself responsible. Um, of going to your classes, of making sure you're on top of work. Really, nobody's checking in on you. Or at least at a, as a, at a big school, nobody's checking in on your schoolwork, on your progress, um, unlike counselors in high school. Um, so that was definitely a big change. And I, I would totally understand if it's a difficult transition to make and for people to adapt to. It's definitely not easy especially if you're making like a big trip across the country or you're going to school um, from like a really small school to a really big school or vice versa. Definitely the transition is difficult, but regardless, um, it will um, turn out okay in the end and you will find your groove, your knits and grits inside of the university. 
Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Uh, one thing is that most of our students who participate in the event love prestigious schools like UC Berkeley, UCLA. Uh, what is one advice you would give all the people out there listening that would really help them push their path forward into a school like UC Berkeley? Yeah, um, so I definitely recommend researching the school. Definitely research the school, research what their passions are. Um, I can say for UC Berkeley, they really care about, uh, or they really want students who care about the community, um, that they're driven. Um, so for example, like volunteer, um, people who do volunteer work, um, people who give back to the community of some sort, people who are innovative. Um, yeah, definitely research the school and then also schools um, specialize in different things. So like, let's say if you want to become a physical therapist or a nurse, um, UC Berkeley may not be the most ideal place to be um, because um, like Fresno State has a physical therapy program for you um, from undergrad all the way to physical therapy school. And then for nursing, um, there's no nursing major at UC Berkeley. So maybe so attending a school that has a major for nursing would be more ideal than attending UC Berkeley just for the namesake of it. Um, but I understand that um, what high school students, their vision of their career is going to be definitely much different um, than, or there could be, there is a high opportunity for um, differences in career choice, um, especially while being in college. So if you don't know what you want to be that right now as a high school student, that is totally okay. Um, honestly, that's what college is for. Um, so if you do want to go to a namesake, like a really high prestigious name school, first thing is don't be afraid to apply. Don't be scared. Um, I know a lot of students um, were nervous. Um, about applying and their and their like high fear of rejection, but honestly, getting rejected is better than um, not knowing like if you would have gotten in if you didn't apply, if you actually did apply. Um, so I would definitely say don't be afraid to apply. Like big names like Harvard, Stanford, Yale, UC Berkeley, UCLA. Do not be afraid to apply um, just because of the name. And also another note I would like to add is make sure that's like the school for you that you want to go to and don't let other people decide for you. Like sometimes you hear, oh, go to UC Berkeley because um, they have like the best, like the name, the most prestigious name. Go to Stanford because they have a medical school. Um, even if you like, even if you don't want to be a doctor, you know, so just make sure it's the right fit for you. Obviously, there are benefits to having a name like a prestigious name on like your resume or school app on your application for jobs. Um, I'm not going to deny that. Um, but ultimately, it decide it um, dwindles down to what you decide and what you think is best for you. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, so you've been in UC Berkeley for a while now, and you're um, assuming you really enjoy your time there. Uh, one question I'd like to ask is, what is something that really shocked you? Like when you first came to UC Berkeley, what was something that like you never expected from the school that really stood out to you? Um, how many smart individuals there are? Like there are a lot of smart people, and I say that in the sense, not only in book smart. Um, there are a lot of people who are book smart, you know, who come from uh, well academic backgrounds. But there are also a lot of people who are smart in other areas. Um, for example, I never thought I would meet a person who actually runs their own online shop with their family at 18 years old. That was like crazy to me. Um, but you meet so many people from so many diverse backgrounds. Um, they have so many different strengths and different stories that um, it's really, really shocking compared to high school where basically um, everyone is from the, zip, from the same zip code. So, you know, home is almost similar. Um, but in college, there's people who come from different parts of the world, different parts of the country, different parts of the state, and um, all come together in this big melting pot 
Um, it's really, really, um, I would say like nice and eye opening to meet so many people with different skills and strengths that uh, you would have never had thought of. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, one question we have from the comment here is that, uh, what do you plan to pursue after college? Like, do you have an idea what you want to be after college? Do you have, a, do you want to pursue f further education? What is it that you plan to do? Um, after college, okay, so before, if I were a freshman doing this interview or a sophomore doing this interview, I would say, yeah, I want to go to medical school. Um, I want to be a doctor. I want to get my medical degree, and then I'm set to go. Um, but now, after um, being in college um, for almost three, almost three complete years now, um, I would say my career choice now would be um, be somewhere in um, e-commerce and marketing somewhere some something along those lines um, for example like the current internships I'm applying to include um, L'Oreal um, Sephora corporate um, something along those lines um, being in college made me realize that I I had a change in heart of career um, and I think college is a great opportunity to really discover what, like an idea of what you want your career to be, but it's for sure not like you have to go to college and like with a career in mind, and this is what you, what your path will be like for the rest of your life. That's great to hear. Um, so you talk about how you're applying to all these internships, right? So mm -hmm. here at the High School Advantage, we want to help students get internships like that as soon as possible. So now as like a third year in UC Berkeley, what are some advice you would give to students who are trying to earn internships now in like the high school state? Um, okay, so I definitely recommend talking to your teachers, your counselors, your administrators, um, because they have so many connections that um, you, will not know about unless you ask them. Um, for example, in high school, I for two summers, for my for the summer after my sophomore year and the summer after my junior year in high school, I um, interned at UCSF, one for the Department of Radiology and one for the Department of Surgery. And I got both of those internships through talking with my teachers and asking them if they knew um, of an idea of how I could um, get to network with these people or to gain some sort of connection to talk to someone in the professional field about an internship. And that's how I landed those to um, experiences. So I would definitely recommend high school students to um, talk with your teachers about that. It might seem intimidating at first because it might seem like you're infringing upon like their teaching duties of teaching chemistry or math, but um, do not be afraid. Um, it's, it's definitely reward, rewarding. That's so great to hear. Uh, one thing I would like to discuss with you about is in most households, I know, especially mine growing up, we were always taught that, oh, you, you'll get into any college as long as you have the best grades, the, the valedictorian, like that's what the things we were taught. So how did you um, address those kind of thoughts, like going to high school and like where you finally discovered it was more than just the grades? Mm. Yes, I grew up in a household like that too, um, where grades um, only mattered, where your GPA, your SAT scores, you know, just like the solid physical numbers um, in academia. Um, I would say like those definitely are not the most important. Um, like I said, I did not um, get or do that well on the ACT or SAT. Um, and I learned that because my roommate in college got a nearly perfect score on the ACT and I I was nowhere near her. Um, but definitely um, those, your numbers are not your defining factors. Um, personally for me, I don't think it was a defining factor because I had other um, experiences that I put on my application. Like again, I did the sports teams, I did student council, and in my essays, I talked about what I learned and any challenges I encountered when whilst being part of those 
um, clubs and teams. And I think that's definitely something to add to your application. Um, definitely, again, emphasizing that grades are not all that. Um, they're definitely not a defining factor. They obviously help, um, but they're definitely not defining factors. And also job experiences, like, for example, if you have to work to support your family, um, job experiences um, also help enhance your application. There are no way um, things that hinder your process of getting into the college that you want. That's so great to hear from you. Uh, one more thing. Uh, so as a college student now, uh, you'd understand like relationships are important, like the connections you make during college are really important. So what is one thing you would say to high school students to help them build relationships with people like their teachers, uh, people they work with so that they could build the connections that can lead them further in life? Yeah. Um, so yes, I a thousand percent agree that Connections and networking is so important. It goes beyond um, beyond just high school. It definitely carries on throughout college, carries on in your career. Um, definitely the most important, I would say one of the most important things if um, you want to um, get a job um, or get an internship, connections are super major. Um, for me, I would say the top tip I would give high school students is to make a LinkedIn. Make your LinkedIn super beautiful. Uh, make it about you, about your professional side. And it's a great way to connect with professionals who you um, meet like very briefly, like let's say you're at like a, like a meeting or like a guest, pres guest presenter um, comes into your classroom and talks with you. The greatest thing to connect is not to get their phone number or email, although emails obviously and phone numbers do help. I think LinkedIn really is the greatest platform because you can connect with people all over the world, not just in your own city or in your own town. And your LinkedIn opens up so many opportunities to talk with professionals in the field that you want to go into or and it opens up your kind of your profile to recruiters. Um, so it's definitely something that I would definitely recommend LinkedIn so you can connect with as many people as possible. Thank you so much. And we're almost out of time for today, but so the final question we would like to ask you is that, so in this internship, our goal is to give students the highest advantage possible. We call it the unfair advantage, whether it be an academic success, financial success, future success, whatever it be. So what is one advice you would like to give the students as a closing remark that you wish you knew when you were younger that you could take now and give it to them? One, and okay, I have like a few things on the top of my head, but I would say the most major advice is do not let the fear of rejection um, be an obstacle for you in achieving what you want to achieve. Um, for example, don't let the fear of like being turned down by a school um, make you not apply because um, you will never know unless you apply. Um, just don't be afraid to um, ask professionals, ask teachers um, for help too. Um, something I definitely wish I knew more of in high school and in college, or yeah, and in college, um, is it just to not be afraid to say you need help and say that you don't know something and you would like guidance. Um, it does not make you, you know, does not make you inferior, does not make you dumber. Um, it definitely is something that um, needs to be emphasized that being vulnerable is okay. Um, yeah, so I definitely recommend that don't let fear of rejection stop you from doing um, what you think is best for your own career pathway, for your own personal pathway. Um, definitely, yeah, definitely don't be scared. Um, take risks. Um, just do not keep yourself in a box and trap yourself to this little container. You can you are free to reach out of it and achieve what you want to achieve and do the best you can. 
Thank you so much for your final closing mm -hmm. remarks. It has been an honor to listen to you speak today. I know our viewers and me personally, we learned a lot from this lesson. Um, with that being said, you have like 30 seconds to plug any Instagram, any social media, anything you'd like. You can even plug your LinkedIn in here as well if you'd like. <laughs> Yeah, 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 definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just Victoria Louie. If not, there's probably a one at the end. Um, but definitely add me on LinkedIn. Um, and then it might give you like a good idea of how you want to structure your LinkedIn too. And you can message me on there. Um, you can ask me questions. I am totally free to answer any outstanding questions and um, any questions you may have about the college process as well. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Victoria. And thank you to all our viewers out here. This has been The Unfair Advantage, and we hope to see you for our next interview. Goodbye.